my name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan, and welcome to the second episode in this Freya Week series, which is a part of this larger God Week concept that I've come up with. Um, previously, we looked at the research and the actual facts of what we have on Freya as far as the prose and the poetic Edda. In this episode, we're going to be exploring a problem that comes up within researching um, Freya and Frigg as two separate deities. While it does appear at first that they are completely separate, and most people would assume that, and I think most people in the community um, just kind of go with it that they are separate deities, there is some evidence to suggest that they might be one in the same deities that maybe just got lost in translation along the way and split into two. I'm not going to look much into the actual like reasons we think that Frigg and Freya are similar deities. I'm going to kind of list them out for you, but if you want more of an in-depth video, please go check out Jackson Crawford's video on Frigg and Freya. I mean, it's like a 20 minute long video. He gives you all the facts and all the reasons, but for the most part, I'm going to run down the main points of why people think that Frigg and Freya are the same deity. I'm going to give you the results of what the community has said, and then run through what I personally have experienced and what others have said on this subject. As usual with these videos, I love using the YouTube polls because I think this is a really good way to gauge where the community stands on certain topics. Um, so this one, of course, I asked if they believe Frigg and Freya were the same deity or separate deities. And then I did leave a column for other in case they had different theories. Uh, but the results were pretty astounding. So 82% of people thought that Frigg and Freya were completely separate deities, with only 13% of votes for them being the same deity, um, and then 5% for other with explanations given in the comment section. And this was out of 1.7 thousand votes. So I feel pretty good about these results, and I also feel like in my talkings with other people in the community, this is pretty accurate. It seems like most people do think that they are separate deities, um, but there are a few people, especially the people that have really dug into the source material, who seem to think that they are one and the same deity. I would even argue that um, within Jackson Crawford's video, it seems that he's leaning a little bit more towards them being a similar deity, or at least one that was at least at one point one deity, and then split into two sometime in the late or middle Viking age. The interesting thing about this debate is that there is evidence to support both sides. Um, there is just as much evidence to say that they are separate deities as there is to think they are similar, if not the same deity. Once again, I'm not much of a linguist and nor do I have a passion for linguistics at all, but it seems like a lot of the people who think that she is a similar deity comes from the language. Um, this is because Frigg as a name means something like love. If you actually go back to like the German um, and see where that name came from, it means love or maybe friendship. So with Freya and Freya, Freya just being Lord, and then Freya just means lady. And so this just being a, a place name seems a little odd. And it also doesn't help that in the prose edda, it mentions that Freya goes under many different names, just as Odin does. So maybe this is Frigg going under different names and goes by Freya sometimes. Um, and I drew a little bit of a chart. It seems like the main theory is that at some point, Frigg was the main female deity, the wife of Odin, but also was Freya in a sense. And then as a title, Frigg had the title Freya and that as time went on, they began to be seen as two separate deities rather than just one deity. Again, as a modern practitioner, I believe this puts us in a really tough spot because I know that many of us see the deities as actual beings. And so now we're sitting here like, oh, was it just a natural progression that split them to two beings? Like, whoa, can I talk to them separately? Before getting there, let me share with you the other information we have that may suggest that they are the same deity. The main piece of evidence that also suggests that they might be a very similar deity, if not the same, is the fact that Freya's husband is Other. And Other's name literally translates to Mad One or Madness. And so she is married to a god named the Mad One. So the chances of this being Odin are pretty high. But again, Other is very lightly mentioned in the prose Edda and even less within the poetic Edda. So it's really hard to say whether or not this is 100% true, this is universal, She, her husband is Other and Other is Odin. I mean, we can't say that definitively, but it seems like that might be the case. And of course, by thinking that, well, Frigg is married to Odin and Odin is Other is married to Freya, it's not a long shot to say that maybe it's the same. But I could also argue for, for the side that they're two separate deities, that it seems like there's a lot of sleeping around in Asgard, so the chances of Odin being married to Frigg and then being married to Freya on the side, 
I mean, I don't put it past the stories. Once again, as I've said previously in videos, I don't really care much about the interpersonal relationships between the gods. It might help you in the form of a kinning and a way to actually communicate with them, but for the most part, I don't think that sexuality is really a thing that the gods possess. I don't think the gods are really riding around and having sex with humans and giants and each other. I think that these are just stories that humans have created along the way, and of course, uh, sex is just one of those things that we find entertaining, especially back in the day before the age of the internet. So they had to add these into stories to at least make them a little bit more, you know, sensual, I guess. I personally don't put a lot of weight behind the relationships of the gods, but from a historical standpoint and a mythology standpoint, it is something to note. Um, now, there are just as many stories to suggest that they are separate deities, um, within the Poetic Edda especially. Um, you see this definitely in the story of Locusena, where Frigg and Freya are insulted separately by Loki. He takes time to, uh, to insult them both on different things, and so it seems to suggest that they are separate deities. Um, and again, I believe uh, Crawford says that uh, Locus Senna is a later story, so this is kind of where that theory comes from, is it seems like it was maybe a later thing that came up, but again, I'm not a scholar, and it seems like that is just something that they say sometimes. So there's one other thing I do want to bring up that I've seen brought up in the community in the past, um, is the idea that uh, Frigg and Freya are an evolution of each other, that Freya was the beginning deity, she is the lady, the young youth, the, you know, the, the free woman, and then Frigg is the more mature and evolved form of Freya as the mother and the protector and the tribe leader kind of thing. And this might be something that some people adhere to, I'm just really, I'm not saying necessarily I believe that, but I think it might be something that helps you kind of wrap your head around this situation. Again, it's, it's a weird way to think because there's, it, it just really changes your way of thinking about the gods as separate beings. But at the end of the day, I think what matters is when you reach out to Freya, do you feel Freya? When you reach out to Frigg, do you feel Frigg? I think that's really, at the end of the day, all that really matters. And if I have any personal advice, and my personal experience with this is I have had an experience with Frigg, and I've had an experience with Freya, both as very separate things. Now, they might be the same deity, but I'm just reaching out to different aspects of the same one, but I really don't try to think about the religion in that way. At the end of the day, there really isn't a consensus among the scholarly community either. And so there's not a consensus among scholars. There's not a consensus among people that practice this faith. Although it does seem to be that most people think they are separate deities. And I would say people following this religion as a living thing now are more inclined to think them as separate deities. Um, just because, like I said, I have had experiences with Frigg and I have had experiences with Freya. So ultimately, what do I think? What's my opinion on the situation? I think they are separate deities. I do think at least they're separate presences. Maybe at one point they were from the same god, but that doesn't really matter too much to us here now in the modern age. At the end of the day, you reach out to Frigg the mother, Freya the, you know, the lady, the lover, the warrior, and you are getting something different from each of those. Um, but the last thing I'll add is that story that I read in the research video, which you haven't checked out yet, please do. Um, I thought there was some really good information in there, and that is um, Voluspa and Skama, which is the small Voluspa um, that features Freya as basically a main character. And it talks about how someone built her an altar, and that then she answered that person's prayers and his cries to have something done for him. And Freya actually does it. And so having this very specific story for Freya, and then looking at a story like Grimness Mall, which features Frigg sort of as a main character, at least as a main subject, her having a different story there. So again, there's probably this, this debate will never be 100% to one side or the other, um, but I really just want to present to you what the community thinks, what scholars seem to think. Please check out that Jackson Crawford video if you want to learn more about the in-depth, like linguistic side and the scholarly side. But I really just wanted to present this information to you as I always do, just as the facts, and then of course sprinkling my opinion on top at the very end, but that is just my opinion. Um, but thank you so much for joining me for the second video in the Freya Week series. Um, please join me for the third video coming out later this week. It's going to be on honoring Freya in the modern times as a modern heathen um, and sharing stories from people in the community who have had experiences with Freya. Um, but once again, thank you so much and until the haul, skull.
as always at the end of this video thank you so much once again for watching please like subscribe and all those youtuber things i'm supposed to say um, but if you like what i do here at the wisdom of odin i really can't do it without your help so please think about donating to patreon i got a lot of great rewards there for you but also you just help me continue to run this channel and i'm so thankful for that so if you do believe in what i'm doing here please consider donating to patreon but otherwise thank you so much for watching regardless and until the hall skull